Well, the streaker came at a time in the U.S. They were everybody was streaking everybody. It was all over the place. It was sort of the, the thing to do, I guess. And it happened to anybody, and everybody was saying, oh, well, the, nobody's going to streak the Academy and the Oscars and so forth. Well, the, we never thought it was going to happen. Because everybody said, well, they accused us that we planned this. It was never planned, at least not to my knowledge. I never knew about it at all. But the streaker, we found out eventually that the streaker came in with a press pass. And he had gotten his hands on a press pass and got backstage. And the Academy had just bought a big cyclorama that year. And he came in with like a razor blade box cutter. He dumped his jumpsuit behind the psych and sliced it right down and came out of there. And it was right in line behind where David Niven was. Now, David Niven, we kidded about it between us in the afternoon. I says, and he says, is there going to be a street? I says, not to my knowledge, David. No, there is not. And he says, well, I'm going to think about it. If it does, and so on, so I says, don't worry. It's not, not going to happen, David. And so we did it. And when the guy went running across the stage, Dave Niven says, and he didn't have any shortcomings. Well, that was his line. And, and, I, and, I, and I also said to everybody in the booth, I said, let me tell you something, he also wasn't Jewish. And so that's a true story. Marlon Brando decided not to pick up his Academy Award one year. Yes, that was very early on. That was in the early 70s. I don't know which exact year. He had, he, he had a cause that year, the Indian cause. And he had, we saw somebody in his seat out there, and we sent somebody out to see who it was. And she said she was there to accept his award if he won. And we found out that her name was Sasheen Littlefeather. And uh, when she, and he did win. And she came up to the stage, well, we had a problem backstage that nobody knew about that uh, we couldn't cut her off because we other people had allowed to have an acceptance speech. And then she started in on her tirade. Well, John Wayne was backstage. Duke was really upset. He, it took us six men to hold him back. He was going to go out there and jank her off that stage. And it was a real, real fight going on until then she finally stopped and went off. And because he was, he was knocking people aside and he was, he was going to run out there right away and get rid of her. And it never, we never got there. But that was, that was very interesting. John Wayne. I think one of the most beautiful moments is the appearance two months before he died. What do you remember about that moment? Well, it happened just before that. Uh, that was about five or six years after he did. The, he was on with Sashi and Littlefeather, and we said we got to get took back because he he doesn't have much more time, and uh, and he wanted to come and he wanted to come and we all said we should do that. So we brought his tri his mobile home. Right down, right, really, right next to the backstage door, he came in. We sit in the afternoon. I found her in lunch hour. He talked for an hour, giving stories. I mean, he was, he was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful man. And we knew that we didn't have to do anything, because all we had to do is just let him come out there, and that the place would come unglued. And that's exactly what happened. And it was incredible timing because he didn't last much longer after that. It, uh, it would have been a terrible shame if he didn't come on the air that year. They would have missed it this incredible man. And that's what he was, an incredible man. Sylvester Stallone and Muhammad Ali. Very important moment because I didn't, the magic that occurred was when the two occurred together on that stage. And, and you couldn't script anything like that uh, it, because it was genuine. And, and because it would never work, they'd never pull it off. It was so genuine and so magical, it's one of the magic moments of the Oscars that you could, you could never redo. Two good guys that liked each other. That's really what it amounted to. Then, maybe not so beautiful, is Vanessa Redgrave's speech. Well, Vanessa Redgrave's speech was a problem child because the audience was, we had to turn off every single mic in, in the place because we, could, we normally would have it on for audience reaction. Uh -uh. We had to turn everything on, only the one mic she had on and we had too much leakage from the audience as it was. And we had to pull her voice down even a level because the audience was so vocal during her time. And we couldn't get her off. Because we, I'm not sure we started the music thing until later. I think it was because of that we started the, third, the, the music sneaking it under and bringing it louder and bringing their mic down because we had to come up with a solution of how to get them off the stage. And that, but because we didn't have it then. She was a problem. 